In this video, we're going to focus on our week data here, and we even have an input data here of the week. And if we select an item here, what we want to do is we want to make sure that it will show eventually on the chart. If I click here, week 44, we can see here 42, 43. Let's select 44. Then we get here the year with the week 44 and the matching value. And of course, we could continue on adding another week and another week and etc. etc. So let's start to look how we can do this. So let's start to look how to insert and display year week data points in Chart.js. First of all, we need to get a boiler template, which you can find here on Chart.js3.com. Getting started this specific link, which you can find as well in the description box. So once you're on here, scroll down and copy this chunk of code. Copy all of this. If you want to understand this code, make sure you watch this video here. So then paste this in here. I will cut out this title here and put that in there. Save, refresh, there we are. So now we have this here. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that the chart is as big as possible. So we make it 80%. And now let's start to convert that into a date and time. So what we're going to do here in the scale, we're going to say X, because what we're going to do is we're going to convert the X scale here. And first of all, I'm going to say here will be the type of time instead of a standard linear type. So once we have this, before I even go ahead on this one, let's get the date and time adapter. So I'll go here and then I'll click or disability chart.js.org, go to the ecosystem here. I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to click on the adapters. And on the adapters, I will take in this case Loxon. The reason why is we need some Loxon features and I know that this one is quite easy for me to use. So I'm going to use the Loxon. Once we're on here, we're going to scroll down and then you can see here basically these two JavaScript files. We need the Loxon file and the charges adapter for Loxon. Both of these are essential. Let's copy those and then I will put this in here. So what's very important is the Luxon file, and I know there's a version of version 3 already, so you can use version 3, that's fine as well. Uh, this one needs to load first, and afterwards we need the adapter of Luxon. So basically this one will load after we have the charges library and the Luxon uh, ready to load. So now we have this, we can scroll down here and continue on. So then in here, we can use the time object because we already have it here. So what I want to do here is, first of all, I want to specify the unit. And I'll say here week. And if I save this, refresh, of course nothing works yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll up and start to change some items. So I'm going to remove all of this and change here what we could do. For example, 2022, uh, October 15. And then another one is 2000. Oh, make sure that's a string value because this will eventually be converted automatically into a adapter or the time adapter will or the uh, Luxon will understand that this is a time and it will convert it. So then another one is, let's say here, 30. If I save this, refresh, as you can see here, we're getting different items here. This is 17, 24, well, let's do that one. I'm going to get here 17, and this will be 24. So we have two weeks only. And you can see here, it shows still in week, but on a weekly basis where it skips a week. So what I want to do is I want to scroll down and I want to convert this into a completely weak format. So what I'm going to say here is, I'm going to say here, display format. So I'm going to make a customized format that I want. We're going to use the weak structure. So we need to have this one. So basically the weak is an object here, a namespace, because we have it specified in here. So then what I want to do here is I'm going to say here, y, y, y for the year. And then we could do here for the week. We can say a W and then capitalize W. If I do this, save, refresh, you can see now it starts to convert it in a different format. We see here the year and the week, the W and the week number. We can remove this because this officially is nothing, has no meaning. We can remove this and then it will look like this. However, I'll just put that one in there because if I'm going to put an input, I will put an input here with the week then you will see that this is a standard structure that they use. So let's start to work on that right now. So in here, I'm going to put in an input and this input 
type will be the weak version and in the input type what I want to do is I want to say on change because I want to have a function and when we change or select a new value in that case what I want to do is I want to say insert weak and that insert weak will be inserted into chart.js here so we can say here that this week will be the this value. So whatever we selected, that will be this. All right. And then what we can say here, I guess we have the type week. There we are. We can do it like this. So we don't need an ID, I guess, because we have the value of this that will reference to this entire input. So once we have that, let's save that and refresh. You can see here now, I have the option to select the week. You can see here the week number. Of course, we need to do now something. So what I'm going to do here is a function. And this function will be called, well, depending on what we have named here, insert week. So I'm going to grab that, put it in there. And then uh, the, the uh, parameter that we use, or the argument was this. So here the parameter can be week date. Doesn't matter so much, but that's basically the week. If I do a console log now, we should be able to find the week date. But this will give us the full uh, element so what I want to do as well is I want to say week date dot value to get the value attribute of that item of the selected item so you have to do a console log here and now I select something here change this into 44 let's select this week you can see here we get here the element itself but also the year itself here with the selected uh, week 44 all right so what I want to do is this this structure as you can see here let me just zoom in so this structure as you can see here now can be used and we can convert it in here nicely so how do we convert this so remember if i scroll up here remember i already referred to that we need the loxon adapter but we also need the loxon file we're going to use some built-in loxon features so what i want to do here now because we already installed basically the loxon by adding the javascript files in here so what i'm going to do here is basically convert that into something readable or or parse it into a readable javascript format so what i'm going to do here is the following i'm going to say here console log and then what i will say here is the following i want to get here the loxon dot date time Loxon is required if you read their uh, file you will see or at least the documentation usually they do it like this and the reason why is that they are probably doing this here uh, constant date we can do this as well time equals that that's basically what they're doing and then they say and then you will see through the entire database like that that's what they recommend so maybe we should just do the same recommendation but it's basically the locks on here so then we're going to say here dot and uh, what I want to do here in this case is from ISO which is the international standard time I guess something like that I, I didn't research that word exactly but doesn't matter and all I want to do is get our week date dot value and put it in here so what we're going to do is we make it readable for the date or sorry for the uh, lock sum so if I save this now refresh let's select something and then open up our developer tab you can see here we get a object here and this object understand exactly what it is it says here the year the month and day 31 which is quite interesting it knows already what the day would be or the starting day of that week and you can see here we have even the time stamp the timestamp is basically the timestamp of that moment or sorry of that date so then we have this here so this is all nicely done so what i'm going to do now is this value that we have here that's now readable or parsed for javascript and parse means to make something readable for we want to insert it in here so basically how do we push it in here well quite simple we're going to say a my chart dot and my chart is the reference of this chart object here and then we go all the way up into the data dot labels and we're going to push it in here so we say here my chart dot data dot labels and then we're going to say here dot push push the value and then we're going to grab now the value here that we made readable so once we did this we're not done yet because we push it in there but then we need to say my chart dot update to update the values or update or redraw the chart 
So let's save this now, refresh. Now we're going to select a new one, let's say a week 44, or you can select this like that, there we are. And as you can see, it moves and it adds up the new item. So you might wonder where does this item really come from or the number six? Well, remember we had here some of these values and chart.js by default will only show how many values are based on the labels. So once we selected one, it starts to push in that value. So let's do another one here. You can see here number nine, which is correct. That's number nine here. No, nope. like that. And that's basically how we can add up weeks into chart.js nicely with an input that combines it together in chart.js. So if you enjoyed this video and maybe you want to even filter data along the way, in that case, I'm going to recommend you this item here or this video here on how to filter dates in chart, in a chart in chart.js, where we have a starting and an ending date that we can filter our chart and showing only that specific segment of the chart.